Hey, Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here, and welcome to Age of Wonders 4. While you guys did technically vote for me to do a Materium Underground based build, I really just felt the itch to play a high culture game. We will get to the Materium game, I promise. We're going to be playing on a coastal game with the Overgrown Realm modifier, which means forest provinces will be common, desert and Ar arctic provinces will be rare, and desolate provinces will be absent. We're also going to add the, uh, not megafauna, we're going to add the wildlands modifier. This will make animal units common, animal infestation comets, and will make ancient wonders such as ziggurats uh, to be absent. So we'll have a much more wild land. We're going to go up to, I would say, let's do a nine player game on a far sized map. Let's make it a really big map. We're going to be playing on Brutal Difficulty, and we will make sure the AI can't use custom rulers, otherwise everything else will be on standard Brutal settings. We're going to go ahead and create a faction. I think what I want to do is I want to play high, so I'm going to try and come up with a sort of evil build. Now, trying to have a little bit of a think about how I want to set this up. Now, if you think about high culture, I believe they start with a shield unit, a range unit, then they get a support unit and a pikeman, and then they get a battle mage. So they're definitely kind of focused on support, ranged and melee and all this sort of stuff. You know, I don't really see a point. I want to go for pack hunter. I mean, spider mounts are just kind of overpowered. Ooh, we could go for Nightmare Mounts. Now that could be fun. We could go for the, an Intimidation based build where we demoralize our enemies. I'm kind of, I'm intrigued by that possibility going in a demoralization route. I think I'm just going to be baseline elves. I'm going to take Keen Sighted for 20% accuracy and Arcane Focus for 15% magic damage. We're of course going to take the High Culture. Silver Tongue is super overpowered for the kind of build that I want to do um, because it'll make trade deals with free cities basically free. You also start with a free scout unit. So there's kind of like a little bit of stuff going on there. I'm trying not to pick all of the overpowered abilities. I don't really want to be settling cities this game. I would much rather be conquering cities, but there is something to be said for going for Adept Settlers. Purely for that plus one city cap, it's a really powerful ability to have an extra city cap. So I think I think we're going to go with Adept Settlers and maybe Silver Tongued. I think that'll be a fun combo. Well, if we're going to be conquering people, maybe Silver Tongued is the wrong thing to take. If we're going to be holding cities directly, maybe Wonder Architect could be a good pick here. Uh, because this will allow me to have Ancient Wonders in my cities without using a population. My cities will gain a 20% production bonus per annexed Ancient Wonder, and I'll start with an Ancient Wonder nearby. So I think I kind of like this, right? Extra city cap, founding cities is cheaper, getting extra population in my cities. Yeah, I, th I think this is a good setup. Now, I'm going to be going for the Tome of Zeal. Oh, do you know what, though? What if I what if I went for Scions of Evil again? I mean, it would give me a lot of draft and Imperium. Well, it's, it's 30 draft per city and 15 Imperium overall. And here's the thing, the high culture gets an extra special bonus when they reach the evil alignment. Uh, if I come down here and hover over that, all my units will start awakened. What do I drop? I guess I could drop Adept Settlers and go for Scions of Evil. This would let me just go full evil from the beginning of the game. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We'll take Wonder Architect and Scions of Evil and we're just going to go hardcore evil mode. Uh, we're going to take the Tome of Zeal, and the reason that we're taking the Tome of Zeal is because we want the Circle of Zealotry. This will give me plus 10 draft per positive or negative level of alignment, so this is up to 30 draft per city. It'll also give me plus 2 city stability per adjacent province improvement, and it acts as a quarry. And this also just generally feels like a very Conqueror-heavy style build, so the Tome of Zeal just feels right for me if we're going for Evil High. We're also going to be a champion, because we're going to be heavily relying on mundane units, and... Uh, Stuff like that. Wizard Kings definitely feel more domination heavy though. Uh, what if I went Wizard King? Let's go Wizard King. Let's do it. Let's do it. Uh, I'm not really going to customize my ruler. I don't... I personally don't really care what the ruler looks like. I mean, I'll, I'll hit the random button a few times and then just go back to Elf. And uh, that's good enough for me. Now, I think I'm going to go for the Tyrant's Sword and Shield because I want that Intimidation Aura. That feels like a very fun way to play the game. And my goal is to like try to route people off the field of battle uh, in most of my battles. Actually, I like this icon here. It's purple and white. I'll take it. So we will be playing as Tyrannus Squall of the Immortal Ildurers. Hail exalted Lady Tyrannus Squall. So here's our starting conditions. Um, we have the Tome of Zeal, Order, High, all this sort of stuff. And we start with Awaken Inner Radiance as a buff spell and the Summon Zealot ability. I am going to immediately start summoning a Zealot um, the second that I have the mana for it. Uh, we do start in rough conditions and we're going up against some pretty tough tough situations here. We do have three melee units and a range unit. We also have a scout here. I think I'm going to try to use my scout to try to clear some of these early nodes. When it comes to actually developing my city, on the other hand, I am going to go ahead and produce merchandise for a turn. Yeah. And then we're immediately going to start recruiting another pair of dust hunters 
to fill out our army uh, because that's what we're missing. We're missing two units here. So we'll see if we can take on this army here. It shouldn't be too difficult. The world is on brutal difficulty, so we will have a little bit of trouble. Uh, let's make sure the scout is in the army too. Uh, early game, you just kind of need as much power as you can. And while a scout is only about half as good as a tier one range unit, it's still a unit. So I'll auto combat this and see what happens. My leader barely survived, which I'm okay with. Um, I'm okay with this auto resolve result, to be honest with you. Uh, there's 150 production that I'm going to cancel a Dusk Hunter and put it into a what? Honestly, it would be good to put it into a shrine because then we can get that shrine immediately and uh, start an extra 10 mana per turn, which seems really, really good. In terms of arcane research, Dormant Enchantment could be quite good. Condemnation is also quite good. Inspiring Chant is amazing because of the extra 10 morale it can do. So I'll get started on that and we will go to the next turn. Let's increase the population of the city with Imperium. Boom. And I would really like to get this farm here. That would allow me to build this vendor and the um, library boosted. Although I feel like lumber mills are better as a first pick because it boosts both the storehouse and the library. So let's go lumber mill first. Then we can build the storehouse and the library quite cheaply. I'm going to hope for another good auto resolve here. Let's see if this works for me. Oh no, actually this won't work. I'm going to retreat and I'm going to move my hero inside my territory to heal and I'll pick up this food cache that'll help my city grow a little bit quicker. So I'm gonna put my hero inside my territory so that she heals 25 health per turn because heroes inside your terrain, or well, units inside your terrain just heal faster um, compared to units outside. And I'm gonna look around and see if there's any easy nodes I could clear. Maybe I could clear this mana node here. It looks like there's only two units in it, hopefully. Right, let's go ahead and bring over the hero. Let's have a look, auto combat. We lost the scout. I don't think I'm gonna accept the loss of a scout here. So I will fight this battle manually and I'm probably gonna push heavily to the left side. And I'm going to try to keep my hero in a very safe position. Now, let's have a look. What do you do? You do Frozen Web, right? Let's get both of our shield units up to here. We'll get my archer to here. I'll put my hero here. Um, we are going to go ahead and move my scout to here as well. We're going to cast Awaken Inner Radiance to give all of my units awakened. Then I'm going to over channel, thus allowing me to cast another spell. And now all my units gain strengthened. Um, and I'm going to use my archer to start chipping away and my scout to start chipping away. And then I will cast um, Shield Wall on my hero. This will bring the defense of my units up quite a bit. So when the web is thrown, the amount of damage we take will be significantly reduced. I'm gonna, t this guy is in a slightly less vulnerable position than the guy on the left. So I'm gonna let him take the retaliation attack. I'll attack with him first. That way the damage is moved onto a unit that has only one engagement tile. Whereas this guy, he has three potential engagement tiles. Now the enemy only has two units, but still you can see how this sort of small optimization matters. Now he's magically charged because he's standing next to the pylon. And this pylon gives people magically charged, but it gives them plus two lightning damage. So he is actually going to do a significant chunk of damage here, potentially killing a spider, thus lowering the amount of counterattack damage that we're going to take. Now this Yeti is a little bit scary. He's going to do a frost breath. So the slow than frozen here is going to make life hard for us, but that's okay. Well, let's do another awaken inner radiance to get strength. You're frozen, unfortunately, as is this archer. Let's go ahead and shoot this for 27 damage. Okay, we got two grazes, that's fine. You're gonna go ahead and do the shield wall again to provide defense, and you're gonna kill this spider. Yes, you will get flanked, but you shouldn't die from that because you're getting shielded. Um, so let's see how this guy plays. Yep, three big hits, that's fine. Let's do another awaken inner radiance to get strengthened back in again. We'll go ahead and shoot the bow, one, two, three. We'll bring this guy around to punch him. Thus, he will take the retaliation attack. Oh, he's immobilized. Oh, if I had known that he was immobilized, I would have done this slightly differently. Are there webs on this terrain? Oh, I'm going to lose a shield unit here because I messed up. Oh, wait. No, no, no. You can retreat. All right, let's see how this plays. Okay, that's much better. He came forward and he punched the scout and uh, we got away with murder there, basically. We got away scot-free. We got 70 mana and an eagle bow. That could be good for our second hero when we recruit a second hero. Um, I'm going to pay the 15 Imperium. Oh, I can annex the Everwell. Perfect. Now, the Everwell is a bronze ancient wonder that provides plus five Imperium, 20 food, minus five morale, but it gives you 20 st or plus two stability per fishery, farm, and forester in the city domain. So we're probably gonna focus on foresters and farms in this city. That feels like the right direction to go. Tyrannus Squall has leveled up, and I want this hero to be definitely a sort of frontliner. I'm gonna go ahead and take, do I want Twin Awaken? It's a free ability that awakens people. Restore is often really good. I've actually also become a big fan of uh, experienced leader here. Like over the course of the first 20 to 30 turns of the game, it can honestly be the difference between a unit having the 
you know, no rank, the baseline rank, and having a really high rank. Because if you think about it, it levels up one of these troops in two turns. It levels up one of the next kind of troops in like a handful of turns. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Experience leader, make him better at combat. I think honestly, she's probably better being in combat. And because she's heavily focused around intimidation aura, I think taking defense here makes the most sense. The more the hero can survive, the longer they can tank damage, the better. So we've had some pretty good early battles here, I would say. I would like to annex another tile. In particular, I think it would be good for me to get another forester, maybe? That would allow me to push towards Granary. It would be good if I got the iron deposit here. This would actually let me build things a lot faster. Plus the quarry would also boost um, these buildings in here. So that feels right to me. And then I'll be able to get the artisan workshop um, and the vendor. I don't know what the order should be for those things, but I'm just trying to build up my capital city in a relatively effective manner. Um, and I think I'm more interested in the production side of things, just getting this city up and running. That's why I'm willing to spend Imperium on it. Let's retreat back to the safe place. And the nice thing is because we have the Everwell, units will actually heal for an insane amount of health inside my territory. I think it's like upwards of, what, 25 plus 30 or something? Something like that. We could take our new pacification ability. We haven't met any free cities, so we don't really care about that. Uh, and we're probably going to be a conqueror anyway. Looks we're, like we're in the top right sort of portion of the map. Uh, my unit, my stack is fully healed now, which is amazing. I'll bring this archer forward, and I think we can be defeat this stack now. We're up against a couple of spirit hawks, some regular hawks, and an inferno puppy. Shouldn't be too difficult of a fight. I'll auto-resolve it and see what happens. Okay, I lose the scout. I'm going to retry that, because I would rather not lose a unit this early into the game. So we're set up to attack next turn. I just basically ran as far forward as I could. Um, now I'm going to get my hero up to this position, get you up to here. Put my archer there, put this archer there. I'm going to have you run around the flank. You're going to get behind my archer. So we're in a very good position now. I'm going to go ahead and do Twin Awakening on my hero. So that was an over channel. I didn't actually take Twin Awakening. Now I can do a Inner Radiance. Boom. And then I could either go for another Inner Radiance or I could go for a Morale Push with Inspiring Chant. That'd be 10 Morale. I think the Morale isn't as good until my units have Zeal. So I'm just going to go ahead and take the, the Strengthened and start doing a little bit of damage to these Spirit Crows. Unfortunately, Spirit Crows actually do have resistance to Spirit damage, but it's not important to me because we've basically killed one on the first turn, um, and then the Scout will basically finish it off. But units being awakened is fantastic um, because it just, it just gives them so much potential damage, especially if the unit attacks three times. I feel like high cultures, they don't um, synergize very well with um, Cultures with shock units. Because like if you look at what Awakened does, it gives plus four spirit damage on base attacks. Like that's actually an insane amount of damage. Uh, like it's kind of ridiculous actually. All right, so I got to get my hero to blast this. Well, first I'm going to do a, another Inner Radiance here to get that 10% damage. And then that should let me one shot you, which is ideal. Then I will bring my shield unit around here to hit this guy on the flank. Then we should be able to get the kill with my archer. And then with that kill, I'll be able to chain that into big damage on the puppy and then big damage on the crow and then a kill. Perfect. Okay, so enemy morale is low, our morale is high. I think this is basically battle over. We'll take a little bit of counterattack damage, but they should fumble it because they're low, they're low morale. Um, and then we'll just, you know, kill, kill, kill. My initial impression of like morale based builds was that morale is like a win more button, but I actually think I'm wrong. Morale is a really good long term sustained battle power. So I think I want to try to play around with being like a tyrant and uh, going like routing my enemy just by being like a, a total bastard. So there's Inspiring Chant. It's very good once we actually give our units zeal. 10 morale and 2 strengthened. Uh, 10 morale is equivalent to about 10% crit chance if you start on um, if you start on neutral ma uh, morale. Now, of course, you need to have 20 morale before you even benefit from that. So that's like a 5% uh, damage buff, and then this will be another 20% damage. So it's like a 25% damage increase. If And if you can cast it twice, it's a 50% damage increase to your entire army that gets hit by it. And it's a 2 hex radius spell, so it's super, super good. Um, Warding Blessing. This is actually a really good spell. It allows you to essentially pick a unit that you want to stay alive. And uh, I like the idea of just having an extra heal that I can throw out in an emergency, so I will take that. I don't need to do anything else in here. I could grow a pop. I think I would like to save my Imperium. I have a spell that's ready to cast. Maybe I should summon a couple of Zealots. I do like that. I should consider where and when I'm going to be doing things. I should also clear this Arcanium or next. 10 production and 10 mana is like super good. But yeah, let's let's start recruiting. We need to get the market as well to keep our gold income going. I'd like to have two stacks of tier one units. I think that would feel really good to me. 
in the early game. I'm going to go ahead and attract a population here and then build a gold mine for the 15 gold per turn because I kind of need that money. And I can kind of accept a slightly slower rate of growth in this city by doing something like this. And then I will get started on the Arcane Institute for the research. Let's go ahead and clear this Arcanium Ore. Now, this does say it's a risky battle. I'm wondering if we auto combat it, what happens? We lose a Dawn Defender. I think I can do a little bit better than that. I'm hopeful. So what are the big threats here? Well, one of the big threats is this ice matriarch with the frozen web. Um, because the timing of that frozen web could be really bad. I mean, this guy is basically guaranteed to kill a unit. You know what? I'm just going to auto resolve. Actually, I don't think I can get better than this, to be honest with you. Now that I've, now that I've looked at the actual situation of the battle, I probably could get slightly better. Um, but... I think these particular units I would actually get worse because of the frozen web and all this stuff. So I'm just going to let this play out as it should. Quote unquote should. Yeah, that's totally reasonable. Bam, bam, bam. Uh, boom. Okay, yeah. So losing a single sword person. I don't know if I could get a better outcome than that. When I, when I really looked at the situation in the battle. Yeah, I don't think so. Now my ruler leveled up again. I'm going to go ahead and take the defense skill. I like them being a really strong front line. Remember, they have intimidation aura. So the longer they can tank on the front line, the more they reduce my enemy's morale. So that's kind of like the idea behind the build for this leader. I'm going to go ahead and summon a zealot basically directly into this stack. The Zealots are quite powerful and interesting tier one fighters. They um, they have relatively low defenses, right? Only one resistance and one defense. So if I awaken these guys and I condemn an enemy, these guys will do, be doing 20 damage per strike. So Zealots are extremely high DPS output tier one fighter units. Um, and the great thing is you can recruit them with mana, but they do cost gold to maintain. So there's kind of like a little bit of um, economic synergy there between the two resources. Because usually if you recruit with mana, you have to expend with gold. And usually if you recruit with gold, you have to expend with gold. Being able to recruit with mana and expend with gold gives it a kind of little bit of synergy there. Now, I could heal for a turn or I could go for this battle. I think we could take this battle pretty comfortably. This isn't a very strong monster den. So I'm going to go ahead and just auto combat it away. Um, I don't want to lose my zealot, so I'm going to fight this battle manually. Unfortunately, I don't have much in the way of healing, but I think we can position ourselves fairly comfortably to make a difference here. Let's see how they play. Okay, so I want my Zealot. Let me see. What's the damage like on this guy? He would do 30 damage. I want my Zealot on you. You on you. I want you here on the sides. I want you to over channel. I'm going to bring both of my archers forward and the scout. I'm going to spam out an inner radiance like so. And then I'll do another inner radiance for the for the plus one strengthened. We'll shoot the pig. If we can get the pig down nice and early, it's good. So we'll blast the pig. Boom. Okay, pig is down turn one. You shield wall. You get a little bit of damage on that bird. Let's see how they react. Yeah, 11 damage, 11 damage. So that's down from the 15 damage he was taking per hit. So I'm glad I did what I did. Now, archers need to do some very particular things. We're going to do this. Now, you're a little bit weak right now. Let's flank this guy. We'd love to get this kill. We will. Boom, boom, boom. So that's him dealt with now. Now we need to get this kill, or at the very least prevent this from getting the kill on my fighter. So let's shoot the bow from you. How does that look? Still a kill. Let's hit him with you. Boom, boom, boom. Um... Still looking okay. We're going to retreat two tiles with you. So you'll take a bit of damage, but you'll be able to counter strike and force a bit of damage onto him. And now nobody should be at risk of dying. We should survive this pretty comfortably. Ooh, the flank is painful, but I think we're fine. Yeah, perfect. Morale is high, and then we can just blast him. I'm very happy with that. I'm always very happy with a battle where I take it from the auto resolve lost a unit to where I lose nothing. Ooh, the ringage regeneration is quite good, actually. This is perfect for a tanking hero, actually. Heals 10% of its maximum hit points as temporary hit points at the end of its turn in combat. Heals 10 hit points at the start of your turn on the world map. This is literally perfect if I'm trying to build a tank hero. Um, I wish there was a little bit more control over the type of type of items you could get in the game. I can't wait till... I, I really wanted to bring out, like, the, the forge of blah 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 patch that'll allow you to, like, make items. That'll be so sick. I think my army's a little bit too wounded. I'm gonna pop back for a heal. And we're about to hit 5 pop which is going to be a turning point for the city, because that's when we're going to go for the Atrium of Light. And we'll probably grab our first Conduit as well. Although we probably don't need to grab Conduits until we're about 10-ish pop. So we'll maybe go for another Lumber Mill real quick so we can build the Granary. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll play it by ear. So we'll let this stack heal up a little bit, and then we'll kind of choose a new direction to go. I could maybe go clear this Tranquility Pool. I'll bring an Archer over here, like so. And we'll go see if we can clear this Gold Mine. Ooh, that is a tier 4 Swamp Troll. That is a little scary. Now, we can definitely take on this, though. The Tranquility Pool. This doesn't look too scary yet. Um, this also looks pretty easy, this Mana Node. But these these look a little bit too rough right now. We do have Warding Blessings, which is going to give us a heal ability in our battles. Um, I really want Legion of Zeal. 
and I also want Condemnation. If I were to pick between them, I think Condemnation is a little bit more important. So I'm going to lock Legion of Zeal and then take Condemnation. And then again, I also want... Well, Dormant Enchantment doesn't really work with Zealots, unfortunately. I wish it did. It would be cool if there was like a fighter thing, but there isn't because fighters are kind of generic units. Um... Yeah, let's take a Lumber Mill on the pasture here. That will give us plus 12 food and 3 production per turn, which is a really nice buff to the city. Now that we've hit 5 population, the Town Hall Atrium of Light will be boosted. So we're going to go ahead and build that for 140 gold. This will give the city plus 1 at province annex range, so we'll be able to annex the Arcanium ore soon. Uh, so we'll do that. And now we have a Tier 2 city, so we can actually recruit Tier 2 units. I would love to get a Sun Priest. The Daylight Spear, I don't know if I really need, but it would be really nice to have a Sun Priest. So I'm going to recruit one of those for my stack. And then I'm going to go ahead and get myself a Granary because I want to keep growing. I want to have a really strong capital so that I can be in a position to conquer other people's cities. Let's bring this Archer over to this fight. Um, I'm going to detach my scout now. I'm going to put this scout on auto explore. He's done his job in terms of helping the early game army. And then we're going to attack here. I'm hoping that the auto combat is like clean. Wow. Okay. Uh, this is going to be a tough fight then. Now, tranquility pools are difficult to deal with because they remove all the status effects on units. But I think we're going to play right side here. So let's make it work on the right side. Yeah, let's push hard on the right to get right in their faces. You're going to retreat back to this position and defend our back. Um, I'm going to go ahead and cast Awaken Inner Radiance here on these four units. We're going to start off by doing a little bit of damage to you. And then you have a small chance of inflicting blind. That's fine. And we don't need to overchannel. I'll potentially overchannel for a heal midway through the battle. But already, turn two, we've almost killed a unit, which is fantastic. Okay, he threw a web at a single unit. This is literally best case scenario for us. So the kind of having a unit on the backline bait kind of worked for us. I hate using an archer shot on this, but it's necessary, I think, to get both of these guys out of zone of control so they can deal with this guy. Then I would love my hero to be get over to here, um, but I'll bring my zealot around first, and then I'll bring my hero around to here. And then I'd like to set up a defensive position around this chasm. We don't yet need a heal on you, so I will just play it safely and let the tranquility pool trigger to remove our abilities. Boom. So so now a heal would be really good on him. Uh, so we will go ahead and cast Warding Blessing. This will give him bolstered resistance. These archers are in like perfect position as well. I could over channel to make them awakened and this would like get me some guaranteed kills I think. Let's do that. Let's over channel. I'll bring my zealot into a flanking position. I'll put my hero behind my shield unit. He will defend him. I'll put this archer to here. You're going to shoot. No, first we are going to do the... Um, awaken inner radiance on you and then when you shoot you should do omega damage boom 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 disgusting you've got a 90 percent chance to hit so go ahead and take out those spiders and then you should finish oh you can't finish the spider you can finish the birds though and then i think you can finish the spiders so now the only thing we've got left to deal with is the ice spider matriarch and her web is still on cooldown and that's her most dangerous ability and she used it on a single unit so like literally couldn't have gone better for me this battle um almost near perfect like basically perfect now we have a couple of options i think we just start blasting and we drop another heal on you and we just we just focus fire her down right and we don't worry about too much else use my defense mode i used to think defense mode like the shield stuff was like really not good but now i can i, I see the power of it right taking like 20 to 30 percent less damage on an, from like having shield wall is honestly it 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 really makes such a difference because not only does it lower the amount of damage your unit takes by preserving the number of units in your formation it actually increases the amount of damage they output so like in a, in a weird kind of way in this game survivability is damage which is something i need to wrap my head around because i feel like in previous age of wonders games uh, units were incredibly squishy which is honestly one of my biggest criticisms of those games is that like auto resolve was really un unkind because your units were so crappy and squishy okay so do i want to get sentinel having first strike is really good now, he has a natural regeneration. First Strike is really good. But I think I don't really care about any of these warfare abilities right now. I think I have all this. I, ha I have all the things that I want, right? Intimidation, aura, and defense. So I'm just going to come down here and take a Vigor to give him an extra 10, 10 health hit points. This means he's going to regenerate an extra health per turn in battle, which over the course of a battle could make a difference, you know? Um, do I want to summon another Zealot? I'm going to summon another Zealot. I, th I think that's a reasonable thing to do. I need a, I need to start building up another stack. And I would, I would like to have three Zealots, I would say, like, by turn 20. That would feel pretty good to me. Day 11 dawns, and I've got my second Zealot here. I would like to clear this mana note. So I feel justified casting a Zealot spell here because I'm about to clear a mana note, which will get me some uh, resources. Uh, this should be an easy auto-resolve. Yeah, it is. Perfect. So Tyranna Squall beat this. Now, I'm really scared about these Plague Spores 
because they do so much damage. Um, three ogres is tough to deal with. I think I'm going to go for it, though. Maybe next turn I'll go for it. I'll give my units like a, just a turn to heal up a smidge. What if I were to cast another zealot? Ooh, yeah. now that feels like it could tip me over from being like, this might work. Plus, I'll have Condemnation now. I wish I had Legion of Zeal. Well, yeah, Legion of Zeal is fine. New Empire Development. I don't have any vassals yet. Cheaper outposts seems quite good here. Outposts are half price and they start with the Palisade Wall. It seems good. I'll take that. Otherwise, I'm just going to hold on to my Imperium. I could also rally out a Summer Fairy, which honestly feels like not a terrible idea. Let's see. So the Summer Fairy is the healing one. AoE heal with a Fire Blast. It's a tier 3 support unit with an AoE heal on a 3 turn cooldown. I mean, it's pretty good. What have we got? This one is Budding Strength. It gives them True Strike. Attacks can't miss. Friendly units in a 1 hex radius. Okay, this is like an extremely good support unit for ranged, for a ranged army. Uh, what about Winter Fairy? Hindering Blizzard. Slowed. Mm. Mm. I like the idea of the Spring Fairy with a bunch of archers. I'm going to I'm gonna take that. So there's some sort of infestation to the north that's sending invading forces. I'll need to be ready to go deal with that. Um, I'd like to clear out uh, a Tranquility Pool here and the Gold Vein. Right, so there's the Health Regeneration tick. I'm loving how leveled up my units are. Quest for Cultivation. They want me to build three farms. I'm going to go ahead and take that deal. That seems quite good. Now, speaking of this city... Um, the Light Forge requires two quarries, you require two quarries, the market requires two farms, the Stonemason requires two farms. I'd like to keep getting my gold and food up a little bit here, and it would be nice to get this iron deposit inside my territory. So I'm going to go ahead and pop a farm right there, and we will go and grab the market. That's 15 gold per turn. I'd also like to grab the Stonemason. That's 15 production per turn. And I'd also like to grab the Tavern. That's 20 city stability per turn. So that's all, that's all looking really perfect to me. The city is developing amazingly well. Um... So I'm, I'm really, really happy with the state of Loria right now. Let's go ahead and cast that second Zealot. And let's see what we can do here. Okay, so we can lose a Dawn Defender, which honestly up against a Butcher is like a pretty high chance of happening just because he has the Butcher's Cut. And that's a frontliner that's going to take a bunch of damage. So I think a Dawn Defender for a gold mine and a bunch of unit levels is actually acceptable because really I don't actually want Dawn Defenders as my front line. I would like Zealots as my front line. I want my front line to be like terrifying melee units. I'll probably recruit another Dawn Defender, um, but honestly, I'm, I'm okay with that outcome. So I'll get a Dawn Defender here and I could in theory, I'm having a little bit of an idea here. If I wanted this army to heal up faster and get back out to combat, what I could do is I could attract a population like so, boom, build my second quarry, jump into this, well, jump into this tile right here. And then we'll heal up faster. Plus, this is another 10 production per turn. It's like a whole 15. So now the city's production is insane, um, which is super, super great. And then they should heal like a ridiculous amount of health, which will allow us to push and clear the tranquility pool next. Um, I'll quickly summon another zealot. <laughs> um, probably going to have, I think four zealots is a good stack here with a some kind of support unit would be good. So Tyrannus Squall, you have reached level five. Restoration is a great spell. 40 hit points. Draining Blade is also a great ability here, plus it would give me extra shadow affinity. I also need to think about the affinities I could be unlocking. Um, Mass Rejuvenation isn't bad. It's honestly, it's one of the better ones because it's a 2 hex radius, 10 hit points one. Draining Blade is great for a melee tank because it lets you do damage and heal yourself, which allows you to tank a lot more. Demon Step is quite good if you want to just get into the fight. Visions of Woe is, a fan is honestly a really damn good... Um, ability if you're like a support mage. I, I really like Restoration and Draining Blade here. I like Mass Rejuvenation, Restoration and Draining Blade. If I were to, if I were to have to have my arm twisted, I like the idea of Mass Rejuvenation the best. Restoration lets me, God, it just, the fact that I can bring a unit back from the dead is so good. Condemn could be a handy ability to have. I'm going to take Experienced Leader, though, because I want my armies to level up a little bit quicker. All right, looks like we're dealing with a Spider Invasion. I'm going to go get into position to fight back against that. Uh, we got our Summer Fairy. Now, this Summer Fairy is going to be in support of this ranged army, and then I would like a Shield unit to also support them. I will quick buy my Sun Priest to get it out here to support the Zealot stack, although the Sun Priest isn't the ideal support unit for a Zealot stack. Um, I'm actually going to cancel this Zealot spell. I think three Zealots in a stack is enough. I should have another two range units here. So I will probably go for two more Dusk Hunters. I could even go for more Sun Priests. But those, that would probably be a little bit too expensive. I think two extra Dusk Hunters is, is fine. So this is this is the, the two stack early game meta that I, I'm moving towards. Now, generally speaking, it's really efficient to go look for a um, expansion. But 
I want to conquer my city. So I'm basically refusing to expand. <laughs> um, I'm doing a one city challenge for a while, essentially. Um, right, let's push our zealots up on the right side. And then we will push our hero through the center with ranged support. Summer Fairy is crazy good. We'll give them True Strike and strengthen. So how long does True Strike last? Okay, True Strike is a single turn. All right, so that's, that's important information for me to have, actually. But I can do that every two turns. The strengthened alone is super good. Um, let's cast the Awaken Inner Radiance here as well. Boom. I'll get my hero up into the front line. Get my little duder. Uh, let's push these archers forward really hard and get some good hits in. Yeah, they resist my damage, but that's okay. And then we'll push the zealots around to the left. You do a little awakening here, my boy. When I say left, I meant right. The other left, you know. Um, I would like condemned. Yeah, I'm happy with that setup. I'm quite happy that I have a heal in this army now. Um, with my uh, support unit. Uh, look how tanky this hero is. Like, he just got attacked so much and it just, it meant nothing. Um, so I'm going to cast condemn on the matriarch. That'll mean when my zealots get into position to take her out, it'll be an absolute slaughter because they'll do just a ridiculous, ridiculous amount of damage. So we'll set those zealots up um, and then we'll kind of use our damage. You go ahead and cast Budding Strength on this guy. Now my units have True Strike, so they can't miss and they just do ridiculous amounts of damage. So that's super good. Loving it. You move to here, face him, shield. You get behind him and shoot twice. Boom, boom. So this, this will be an absolute slaughter when my fighters get into position. So 36 damage from two attacks, and then you should finish them off. Take a little bit of counter damage. Excellent. So let's go hunt down that um, infestation to the north. I think that makes sense to me. We also just finished Legion of Zeal, and it's time for us to pick our second book. Now, thinking about the books we could go for, there's quite a few options. Uh, the Tome of Warding, I've actually become a huge fan of this, like Magical Wards for the plus one lightning resistance, fire resistance, and frost resistance, and staves of warding. Like, the combination of these two things make you so resistant to magic. We could also go deeper into faith. I don't know if I care so much about this direction. I mean, there is something to be said for going further into this direction. Things like abbeys. Um, yeah, nothing here really jumps out to me as something that I super hardcore need. I mean... The, th the Tome of Enchantment and the Tome of Warding both feel like really good picks to me now, right? Like, Awakened Tools is amazing. Sundering Blades is amazing. Spell Tempered Shields and Seeker Arrows are both quite okay. I mean, if I took Seeker Arrows, my units would have six range, which is ridiculous. I really love Tome. I really love the Tome of Warding. I'm a big fan of it. Um, ever since I, I, I like, just the, the Staves of Warding thing, just two bolstered resistance is insanely strong. Um, and Astral Affinity also has a lot of power. That said, if I wanted to go more in a magical direction, I could go for the Tome of Pyromancy and get the Ritual Pyre. It would also give me Chaos, um, as well as Fiery Arrows. I can inflict Burning Damage. I think it would be good to pick up a Chaos Tome. Um, this thing right here, Impressment, 30% unit upkeep for Tier 1 units is so good. It's just really hard to pass it up. So... While I would love to go for the Tome of Warding, I think... Wait, is there anything in here that does Morale Damage? That's the real thing I'm curious about. Chaplains are insane. Yeah, I think I'm going to take the Tome of Pyromancy just because it gives me a extra damage channel in fire. It'll give me a tier two battle mage with AoE clear, which is quite good. And it'll also give me access to the ritual pyre, which is a really good mana income generating forester. So for all those reasons, I'm going to take the, the, the Tome of Pyromancy. It's just a really good one. And plus, I just don't want to pick the Tome of the Horde because it's too good. You know, um, I want to play slightly less optimal builds. I want to experiment, you know, and I think sometimes we gravitate a little bit too much to what's the best thing. Um, it would be nice. I don't really need a damage spell. I already have Condemnation and I think that's better. Honestly, the Pyromancer might be the best thing to add to my army. Um, if I were to add two Pyromancers, so like I'm actually going to cancel these Dusk Hunters, if I were to add two Pyromancers instead of Dusk Hunters, that would be amazing um, with the Zealot army. So I think that's my, maybe what we will do. All right, let's start clearing some nodes. We got, we already got Storm Giants. Jesus. Uh, auto combat, hopefully nothing dies. Okay, a Zealot got hurt a little bit, but that's fine. Um, let's move over here, clear this next. We do have another spell to cast. Nobody is applying the Legion of Zeal yet because I don't have a unit that takes it, so there's no point in casting it. Our man is a little bit low um, ever since I recruited that fairy. So I think it would be good to get my Manla Obelisk next. So I'm going to queue that up in my city. That'll be an extra 15 mana per turn. Then otherwise, we should start considering our province improvements, like the Ritual Pyre. The Sunshine would be nice to get, mostly just so that I have a single research post in my army. 
and the circle of zealotry would be quite good depending on where I built it. Um, particularly if I could surround it with tile improvements to get extra stability. I need to start doing a little bit more evil stuff. Um, so I'm going to attack this even though we would normally just win it easily. Um, I don't want to lose a zealot so of course I'm going to fight battles where I lose a unit. It just feels natural to me. This again should be a fairly straightforward battle. Um, you I'm going to push here to the left. I will cast Mending Awakening on you. And then I'll do... Well, I don't need to do a restoration, but let's push all of our units this way. And we'll make a trio of archers with the assistance of a fairy. These guys are in a great position. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do Awaken Inner Radiance right here. So that all my archers get the Awakening. I'm going to over-channel with my hero so I can cast another spell. I am going to cast Budding Strength on these guys. You can reach him. So we could start like the range. Actually, I should have gone for the artisan. God, this range is disgusting. All right, let's bring down. Now I could cast Inspiring Chant. And I like the idea of casting Inspiring Chant. So let me have a little bit of a think about my exact positioning that I want to go for here um, to maximize. Because these guys don't really have AOE abilities. So I can kind of bunch up a little bit. As long as I'm protecting my range units, I'm good. Let's do an Inspiring Chant here. A bunch of morale and a few units get strengthened. So boom, boom. Penguins are severely damaged. We will nearly kill the penguins. And then we'll spread that damage onto the ogre. God, that is so disgusting, actually. I should really look and see if maybe I could get a tier 3 ranger unit. All right, he did a little bit of damage to me. That's okay. Poisoned. That's fine. And then we'll probably take a bleeding. No, we resisted the bleeding. The penguin's up. Um, let's go ahead and cast a condemn on the ogre. This way we can kill that ogre pretty simply. Um, archers should do most of the work here, I feel. Oh, you actually managed to roll a graze. That sucks. Should one-shot these guys. Perfect. And then one-shot. The archers are insane, dude. It's actually ridiculous. Our ability to mow through troops uh, when we position ourselves correctly. The battle has been won by Tyrannus. Do I want to go for the Storm Giant? Now, Storm Giant's a little bit scarier. He has Lightning Strike. Deals damage to a target and up to two other targets within four hexes. Tempestuous Smash. We could bring him down, I think. Um, there's a lot going on there. Do we want to try to bring him down? What is he standing on? He's standing on just a gold mine. I reckon we could go for it. Honestly, this actually looks like an okay place to build a city if we can clear it out. It's got reasonable resources around. Probably what we will do. Yeah, let's see if we can clear this. I'm going to auto combat, see what happens. Losing a single zealot, a wounded zealot for this, I'll take it because I can just cast another one. That honestly doesn't feel like much of an expense to, expense to clear a node. My ruler also leveled up. I could take searing weapons, which... Honestly, would be a DPS increase in general and would be a worthwhile warfare skill allowing me to get defense three. So I will take searing weapons. Plus, I like the idea of them just having Bernie, Bernie swords. We got a satirical orb, which is a tier two spirit damage orb. It's quite nice. And I have to say, I feel like things are going extremely well for us. Like I'm, I'm I mean, I, I, like when I say extremely well, I don't mean like we're, we're crushing it, but we're stable. We're progressing. We're building up our city. Uh, Christoph Monnier can join my recruitment pool. Yeah, hell yeah. I'll take him. He was a pretty he was a pretty fun guy to play. So if you don't know, that's a event relating to previous games that I've played where you can get into your recruitment pool heroes that were in your previous games. So here he is, uh, Kristoff. Quite quite fun. We will be recruiting him, I think. Um, it'll make things interesting for us. He's part of my pantheon. Okay, this Brewer Ogre needs to be dealt with. If we attack that Brewer Ogre, we're going to have to deal with this other NPC army. I think we can take that. We have enough mana for a battle. Uh, we're a little bit low on mana, though. It's being a problem. We can annex another province. We're not ready yet to build a monolith, so we don't need a conduit. I would like a conduit. I need the mana, though, so I'm going to build the conduit. That's another 15 mana. So now with the mana obelisk and that conduit, that's going to extremely sort of refill my mana pool for me, which makes me feel a lot more comfortable taking battles. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and take this battle then. Now, I should be able to auto-resolve this, but I think because it's a lot of shock units, I'm going to have to fight it manually to really make... Because this, this archer setup requires quite a bit of micromanagement because of the way the, the archers work. Um, let's push Let's push to fight around... Um, yeah, I think pushing to fight around here again feels right to me. So we'll push, 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 push to the left fight in the center. Yeah, this is kind of like the, this is the scary part. I'm trying to think, how do I reduce the arc that we're going to be fighting against? Uh, um, you're going to stand here. You're going to stand there. You're going to stand there. And you're going to stand there. Now, we're going to go ahead and do a true strike boost. And then we're also going to awaken our inner, inner radiance. So these guys get a range boost. And I think I should take down the ogre because this guy has the potential to do a frigid belch, which is severely dangerous. I'm going to go ahead and over channel. And 
I think I'm going to awaken another inner radiance to give these guys a 10% damage boost. And that might be the difference between bringing this guy down and not. So let's see. 45 damage. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, we should bring him down. Boom, boom, boom. And... Can you get up here and finish him? You can. 21 damage. That's perfect. Uh, what can you do? We definitely want to damage the shock units because they're going to do the most damage on this next turn. The turns after that, it's not going to be the shock units. Let's go ahead and do a shield. Now, they'll be tempted to break this shield. But that's fine. I'm a little bit scared about units flanking me too. Okay, so under defense. Yeah, there's the shock. There's the flank. We'll have to deal with those flanks. Um, we're going to be we're going to be focusing heavily on healing this turn. Um, now, I could do an inspiring chant here. I don't know if that makes sense though. You could basically kill him. You can kill this spider. Take that. That will hopefully lower their morale. So the morale is low now. Spirit resistance. Let's take out this dog, because this dog has one of my units in zone of control, meaning they can't attack. Now we're high morale and they're low morale, putting us in an even better position. And these dogs are honestly the big threat right now. So if we take them out, I'm going to go ahead and condemn... Well, no, I need to heal. I think I can blast you with my spring fairy. And then... Boom, boom. So, I could do an inspiring chant and get a couple of kills here. I definitely need to kill this grub. Maybe I'll do a warding blessing. Who's likely to die? Honestly, no one is likely to die. So I think I can get away with an inspiring chant. All right, let's take out this grub. I think the grub is important to kill. And then if I get both of my guys to focus on this little piggy, that would take an enemy attack off the field. And lowering enemy actions is good. Plus, maybe some of these units will flee. Amazing. Yeah, so that's the power of, like, killing a bunch of units all in the same turn. You get them to rout. And think of how strong my abilities are going to be when I actually start, when I get the when I get the Doom Herald. And I can actually, like, directly lower people's morale. So do I want to build an outpost here and take a turn to heal? Or do I want to keep up the momentum? I think I want to take a turn to heal. Now, ideally, I would build my outpost there. But I'm going to actually build it here, I think. Yeah, this seems like a totally fine place to put an outpost. So we will. I'll put all my units in here so they have somewhere to heal. And we'll just chill for a turn. We did finally unlock the Pyromancer. So we are going to try to start unlocking that. Or recruiting it, rather. Dormant Enchantment. Fanatical Workforce. Or Immolate. I'll take Immolate. Um, there are going to be situations where that might be useful. Particularly if we're fighting, like, plant stuff. The draft in the city is really low. I really need to deal with that. So we'll get the Light Forge next. And then we'll get to work on two Pyromancers to fill out my army. So we have met Shine Spire. This is actually perfect for us. It's a... Free city that's hostile to us that we can go conquer. So these are the Awakened Cat Folk. They are resolute. They are desert adaption, the prolific swarmers and fabled hunters. So we're going to go and basically immediately attack these guys. Uh, basically the second that we deal with this monster den. So I'm delighted that we found that free city. Someone to conquer, basically. All right, I think we're going to chill, heal, chill here for a turn so we can heal up. Um, and then we'll clear out this monster down. I think that's fine. Do I want to turn this into a city? I think it would be fine to turn this into a city. I will found a city of the immortal ill doers. Um, and I think the goal here is to just like build up a kind of a weak city and then maybe release it as a vassal later. So there's an infestation over here that sent invading forces. I will have to just accept that. I think I might be able to pull back, kill it, and then quickly run over to Sh Shine Spire. But yeah, like infestations from the Fog of War sending invasions to me. It's kind of a little bit scary. Uh, but we are hitting turn 18, so some of these guys are going to start upgrading. So I definitely want to clear out some of these nodes around this new city. Uh, because the more nodes that I clear, the faster I'll be able to develop the city. So do I clear the node or I do, clear, do I clear the den? Clearing the den has a lot of potential. Um, I think I would like to recruit a hero now. So I'm going to recruit you. Yeah, we will be over the he hero cap for a turn or two, but that's fine. Um... Let's put the melee unit in here, and then let's go clear out that monster den. Oh yeah, there's a lot of stuff around here we got to clear out, so we'll be we'll be busy for a while here. Um, but I'm really excited because these guys are champions, and they're halfway to becoming legends, which will give them eagle eye, which is plus one range. So these guys will have up to like, what, six range? I can get them up to somewhere in the region of seven range if I really wanted to. I'm hoping for an easy auto combat here. Um, losing a zealot is acceptable, but I will fight it manually. This game is very much so about momentum. Um, I'm willing to lose, like, a single, like, crappy zealot unit that... Because, like, if you think about what I'm really losing, I'm losing, like, 60 mana and the amount of upkeep that it cost me. So I think we want to set up a really tight defensive line, like, here. I'm going to put my... Yeah, I think it's something like this, right? I have my shield unit behind my zealots. He's going to be just doing defense mode over and over to give these guys plus three defense, which brings them up from taking 10% reduced damage to taking 34% reduced damage. So their effective HP is like way bigger. Yeah, it's just, it's just way bigger. They just have so much more effective HP by having a shield unit behind them. Honestly, the, the shield unit AoE stuff is is super great. Um, I 
underestimated how powerful shield units are, but they're actually really good for supporting non-shield units. Like a shield unit behind a, a row of spearmen is just insanely good. And then I'll have my hero. Now, this is hard terrain that you can't shoot through, but I'll have my hero hold the line on the right side, and I'll have my archers over here on the left. Yeah, I think this is fine. All right, let's go ahead and boost these guys. I will also awaken their inner radiance. Let's move these archers over. You can get two shots there. You can get two shots there. Um, you can get a shot from here. It's pretty good. And we'll just awaken my hero. I'll put him into... Do I want to over channel? No, I'll just do defense mode for now. And the rest of my units will go into defense mode. Big damage. Resisted. He was immobilized, but he's like a defender, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, like, look how little damage my units are taking because of the overlapping defense modes. I feel like I'm becoming much better at the game, for sure, uh, since I started, like, experimenting with defense modes and shield units. All right, so this unit's frozen, this unit's frozen. Uh, we could do an inspiring chant and hit most of my army. I think that's a fair thing to do. Ten morale and strengthened on these bad boys. I think we would like to start hurting this ogre. The brewer ogre is a little bit scary. Um, the ice spider matriarch also needs to die. I don't need to throw out a heal yet. We'll magic blast you. My hero will kill you. And then we'll bring down the ice spider matriarch. I was hoping for a crit there, but unfortunately I'm going to have to spend two archer turns on it. I think it's worth it though, um, because now I have high morale. You can pretty safely attack these penguins. You provide your defense zone and you stay in that defense zone. I'm, I'm feeling really good about this. Okay, he got around and he froze one of my zealots, which is fine. And we've got a skirmisher flanking us. But we should be able to deal with all of this. Let's wake up the zealot. I'm going to get that kill right there. Now, this guy is frozen. I'm still going to shield wall with you. I'll get my hero to deal with this. Boom. So that that's this this pig is no longer a problem. These trolls are a problem. Yeah, I think if I if I kill this ice troll, this spring fairy will be ready to go. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop a warding blessing here to get him up. So no matter what, he just can't be killed now. I'll move the sun priest forward and the archer to here. And I think if we focus fire this troll... Oh, the crit was amazing, dude. Literally perfect crit timing. Um, and another perfect crit timing. Dude, that is huge. Uh, let's go ahead and do an awaken on this guy. So that he also has the potential to inflict distracted. And poisoned and all this sort of stuff. Oh, wait, I didn't actually give him the thing. Yeah, but otherwise I think we just, we just wait a turn and we win this battle. I mean, we take a bit of damage, but it's like, whatever. Huge. Morale is low. Um, so just think of how good it's, my build is going to be when not only can I tank insane amounts of damage, I start to inflict morale penalties with my units. So we got the Zealot. That's quite good. Uh, leveled up. Uh, a couple of units are leveling up. My hero leveled up as well, which is really fantastic. We got 65 food, 77 production. We got a new shield. Oh, that's amazing. Adjacent allies have plus two defense and plus two resistance. This is like perfect. Uh, the Storm Orb is a tier three orb. And we got the Locket of Channeling. Oh, wow. So, uh, we'll take the lock of the channeling. I will replace your feudal shield, which is just the basic shield, tier one, with a noble Aegis, because it just makes you just better at tanking AoE. Um, we're going to go ahead and take defense three. This will bring you up to seven defense uh, with 20% evasion. So, very, very tanky hero right now. Didn't take too much damage aside from my front line. I do have enough healing to maybe sustain another battle. Um, I really don't want to fight a Karag, though. Not when my stacks are hurt. So, maybe I'll go for this... Swamp Troll fight. Let's auto combat and see what happens. So losing a Zealot and an Archer is unacceptable. So again, I will fight this battle manually. I'm going to try to fight a lot more battles manually because I think you guys really enjoy this aspect of the gameplay. So I think the big thing we're lacking here is healing. So what is the range on this heal? I can heal this tile. So I'm going to get you to here. I'm going to drop a fat heal on you. I'll get you to here. You're going to run forward. You're going to cast Awaken. And then you're going to heal this guy. And then this guy, I will drop a castable heal. I'll get my shield unit behind my front line, like so. And then I will bring my archers to the position that I like, like so. Are we up against any AoE? Just this Plague Spore. It's kind of painful, um, but we should be able to live through it, especially if we use support, support mode on our Sun Priest and the um, Spring Fairy to minimize damage. So I think I'm actually going to use Budding Strength this turn for the Strength and not the True Strike, so that I can use the support mode to prevent a lot of magic damage on the um, the Plague Spores. Because like these guys have zero resistance, whereas if I give them two resistance, that's like uh, a 20% reduction in the damage they're going to take, which is super good. So I'm going to move my whole army stack forward two tiles. But the specific way I'm going to do it is I'm going to rotate my army like this. 
I'm going to put my hero here, because remember, he has Noble Aegis, which basically means that he provides plus two defense and resistance to adjacent allies. And then if I use defense mode, these zealots now have six armor, which is basically like them being a shield unit um, in defense mode. So they're like super, super tanky, even against magic, right? 30% magic re reduction. Very, very powerful. Um, I'll put a shield unit on the flank like this. I'm going to put a support unit here and a support unit here. That way, the only unit that's not getting the resistance is this guy in here. And I will space my archers out in a very particular way. And then I will cast the um, Awakening and we'll just do a little bit of shooting. Nothing too crazy, just a little bit of early damage. I don't care if some of these attacks don't hit. Um, but if they do hit, I'm happy. So now we just lock up all our defense modes. So we've got overlapping defense modes. Oh shit, I forgot to use my defense modes on my support units. Whoops, I attacked. I was on autopilot and I attacked. But look how much damage reduction we had there. Um, it was huge. So I'm a little bit worried about the amount of damage we're taking. Taking a lot. Oh, come on, Zealot. Okay, so we're going to drop a fat heal on that Zealot. We're going to do an over channel. Um, now, can you kill this Zealot? I don't think you can. So our main objective here is to get that, keep that Zealot alive. Let's do an Awakening. And we will also move... You to here, and we'll do a true strike. I want you to tackle the Swamp Troll just so that he's forced to move and he doesn't get a, a, a really efficient attack action um, with three Poison Bolts. So he's going to get only two Poison Bolts at maximum and also take a Retaliation attack when he backs up. So I'll get you to take out the Grub. Then I'll get you to take out... I guess these are all equally dangerous, so just take out units um, at will. These guys are a little bit more dangerous because of their positioning. Kill him and kill him. Perfect. I'm going to move you one tile to the right. You will take some damage, but this will let my hero come forward and obliterate this kid. And then we should be able to inflict Distracted, and then you should be able to finish him. Perfect. So now his morale is low, and I think he might be able to kill this Zealot, but the Zealot is in Obscured Terrain, I think. So we'll see how he goes. Oh man, he failed! That's huge for me. Let's cast Inspiring Chant to make sure everyone has high morale. Let's go for it, dude. It's not going to be a huge amount of damage from these guys because they might miss. Oh, there's the crits, baby. Give me, give me, give me a good crit here. Oh, nice. Right, shield unit, tackle him again. Uh, why don't you go ahead and kill him? Perfect. So one nice thing about going for the Pyromancy book that I actually didn't think about is that we might be going up against some plant units. And these plant units have weakness to fire, which honestly has really good synergy. I didn't even think about that in this particular game. Now, my capital has built the Light Forge, so it's up to 40 production. It will grow in a turn. I could pay 15 to grow now and get started on that armory with my third quarry. I think I like that idea to pay that. I'll drop a quarry here and then immediately um, start building the Circle of Zealotry on this tile. Uh, and then we'll go for the armory. The Circle of Zealotry will eventually provide us a lot of draft. So that's fantastic. City is developing amazingly well. I would really like the Monolith too. That's 20 mana, so I'll get started on that. I definitely need to get the mint soon, especially if I'm going to be recruiting Pyromancer, so I'm going to have to kind of think about my third farm next. I could just get it now and then go for the mint. But I'm feeling really good about this city. Like, it's developing amazingly well. Um, and I've got another city coming up, and I'll probably go for a gold-based build in the city to try to sustain my army. Yeah, I just don't see much of a point in unlocking a lot of these things. I mean, knowledge extraction is good. That's the naturally good one. I don't have any vassals. I don't need a Whispering Stone. I don't have any city-states that I want to be friends with right now. Uh, seafaring, Excavate, I'm not underground. I don't need to build roads. I mean, road building can be useful, so I guess I'll take that. It's a useful ability to have. I haven't seen any water, so I don't need to embark. And I'm, I'm always of the mind that it's better to have a resource in the bank than spent on something that isn't immediately helping you. Because the second that making the decision to get the thing that could help you is available, you could just take that decision. Whereas if you hold on to your Imperium, maybe a better decision will come along. I don't know, that's just the way, it's the same way I think of Envoys in Civ 6. Now my Zealots are getting a little bit hurt, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna dip them back into my terrain. And I think I'm just gonna solo clear. I'll, I guess I'll bring the Chaplain or the, um, the Sun Priest while I, while I clear this. Uh, now they are trying to retreat, but I wanna be evil this battle, like this game. So I'm gonna go ahead and auto combat them. And we just took them out so easily. Perfect. That was exactly the kind of thing I was looking for. So I'm super happy with that outcome. And my hero is coming. We have finished researching Immolate. Let's go ahead and Searing Blades, I think, is our next step. We're not going to have a lot of ways to inflict the burning negative effect until we have those fire mages. Let's go ahead and finally cast Legion of Zeal. I think it makes sense to do it now. We're up to 57 mana per turn. I do like the idea of getting career soldiers to let my units level up faster. I don't have, I don't have, I haven't found enough free cities to make Rite of Allegiance make sense, but I will take that 20% experience gain. I mean, it, it really does mean 
that these units, these career soldiers, will uh, th these melee units, they'll hit their their stride faster. And uh, I'm pretty sure when they get exalted defense, they actually provide bolstering, bolster defense to neighbors. We have now changed to evil, which is fantastic. It means that we're now getting plus five Imperium income from Science of Evil. And also in our capital and all cities, we should also be getting um, plus 10 draft from being negative alignment from Immortal Ildurers and the Circle of Zealotry because we're negative alignment. It gives you 10 draft for every level of positive or negative alignment. So everything is kind of pointing in a really good direction for us here. It's fantastic. So, super happy with the current situation in our city, draft-wise. We'll get those pyromancers nice and quick. Now, the thing about draft is it basically increases the speed that you spend your money. So that's something you need to be careful of. But I would say that uh, Gore Galore, so they want me to... They want the Mark of the Butcher traits. So let me have a look here. So I get minus 10 alignment. Units of this race earn 50% experience in combat, but cities of this race will lose two stability for each population. Uh, hell yeah, let's be the Butcher. Now, that does mean that city stability is going to suffer a bit for me. So that's something I'm going to have to counter a counter of uh, counter attack counter effect. Do I'll have to do something about my stability, but that's really cool. Honestly, let's go ahead and give the whispering stone to this city to bring that stability back up because we can always get more whispering stones. We have two available in this tree, so we may as well keep one in our capital to keep our capital happy. I do think that consolidated industry is quite a good ability, so I'm going to take that. That's plus one stability. Um, it's actually quite a lot of stability across an entire city. It can be the difference between like super negative on stability and just like if it pushes you over a threshold, I think it's worth it. Basically is what I'm my, my logic. So let's go take out this Karak and I think this will be the last battle before we consider moving on to fighting our way to Shine Spire. And there's a whole bunch of really fun battles that are going to be coming up here that we're going to fight our way through. So I'm excited at that prospect. Uh, speaking of Sunshine though, um, I'm going to spend Imperium here to attract a population, get a lumber mill, and then immediately start building the storehouse and the library in here so that we can start to build up the city's uh, economy a little bit. But then we'll focus on gold afterwards. But yeah, I think a, an early forester feels like a good move. Let's get the pyromancer up to the front line and let's go ahead and fight this, what hopefully will be an easy battle. Now, do I want to auto-resolve and take a single zealot loss? I think that's fine. And the reason why I think it's fine is because this is a relatively new zealot with low experience and also I have a pyromancer coming to replace his position in the stack anyway so I think that's fine because the hero of the day is going to be um Christoph Munier yeah feeling really good about our current our current board state if you know what I mean so I need to start thinking about my third stack of units that's going to have to come soon the great thing is that the war with Shine Spire is going to be an amazing opportunity to get negative alignment from pillaging and also attacking the city and converting it to, you know, our, our stuff. We're going to put Kristoff in charge of Sunshine. We're going to finish casting Legion of Zeal. Give these guys nice glowy golden weapons. I don't care about all seeing eye until I actually have a city state to give a, a stone to. And yeah, let's start recruiting for our next stack. We'll get some Dusk Hunters. Or do I want to go for more of a Pyromancer heavy stack with Dawn Defenders in front of them? Let's go for more Pyromancers. Five turns for a Pyromancer feels pretty good. It is tier two though. They're 12 gold per turn. They're super good with Flame Strike, though. Flame Strike's a big AoE spell. They do good damage. Mm, do I really want a Pyromancer? Sure, I'll, I'll build some Pyromancers. But I tell you what, on the dawn of... Oh, what is going on there? I see a, I see a potential free city to our east. Um, yeah, but on the dawn of the attack on Shine Spire, I'm going to go ahead and group these guys together and call that the end of this episode. We are in what I would consider to be a pretty damn good position. We have two cities. One is really well developed. One has just been founded. We've got a city that we've got our sights set on. And this has a Father Oak, potentially two Father Oaks in its zone, which means we could make this an amazingly strong forestry city. So there is a huge potential for the development of Shine Spire as a very, very powerful city. I'm going to go ahead, though, and call that the end of the episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. I love you all very much, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.